So Nick S on YouTube asked on my solar setup, I did a video of the project as it was in process. Um, it still has a couple things to go, but I'll just do a quick overview of the finished product here. Um, as you can see, these are the brackets that I made. I just used some uh, L channel aluminum. It's three by one as the L goes. And then I made a flare in it here. And then I drilled a hole through both surfaces that's recessed up. So once they're tightened, it pulls the bottom up. I also put, it's hard to see, but some felt on both sides of it. So as it pinches this channel, which is fiberglass and can easily splinter and break, uh, it won't crush it too far and it won't leave any scrapes or marks on it. You get the silver point effect, which is like drawing with a silver uh, pencil on the white if you rub the aluminum against it. Um, and then this was a three by three channel that I cut and drilled holes in, tightened it all down. This is all done with Loctite so that these won't come undone. That same channel here, cut, and then I just shape it. You can see it when it's really close, you can see how ugly it is because I didn't do any polish end work. There's also a bearing assembly compressed into the tube here that the solar attaches to. And then this bar here is just to support it across the top so that the weight is more evenly distributed. Um, so this axis here allows me to tilt 200 watts of panels upright like this. I don't have the driver to unscrew these right now, but it has two bolts in it right now. Those will actually be pins. And when this lifts up on the sides here, there'll be the telescoping tubes for the annex tent. Those will stop about here and all the tent material will be actually under the solar. So it'll be nice and packed tight against there. Um, but as of today, it's just a few pieces of angle aluminum and um, just some simple shaping to make it look a little bit more like finished, so to speak. And you can use grinders and jigsaws to cut aluminum. It's very, very soft. It's almost like working with a soft wood. Um, and open up the Jeep. Got the Alpacool cooler inside here and the bags. This is where all my extra stuff equipment wise goes and those paper towel rolls and all that goodies, toiletries and stuff and the drawers. But the real bread and butter of this situation is if you look up under the solar, so there's not only does the solar fold up, but there's extra cord under there to allow that to happen. So you have to get a little bit longer of a cord. I've got it bungeed so as you lift it, it stretches back out. And the two wires, the positive and negative, come down here and here. This is actually the red wire, um, the negative, or the positive rather. Um, I wrapped it in electrical tape because I didn't like the red sticking out there, but I just compressed them back and around that uh, hinge bracket there. So it's very hard to see them from the outside of the vehicle because I like the aesthetics um, to be clean. And so those basically just go into this rain gutter. I've taped them together so they're one uniform wire, but nothing actually tucks into this channel here. It's just an open gap. So I don't push it tight against it, just enough so water can run down and around it. It comes down and goes below the gasket and then it comes back up. This way water coming down will hit the low point and drain out and then nothing wet will come into the electrical system. This is where the wires are finally separated again. And they run up and behind and are plugged into this. There are a ton of different options for these. I went with this one. Jackery makes them. Rockpal makes them. Um, Battleborn, I think even. No, no. Uh, who is it? There's another couple companies that make these. But they're basically just a power generator they're referred to. This one I specifically chose because it is an MPPT, um, which means that it can handle low light situations from solar much better because um, it can match the voltage peaks for what the, what the actual input is um, and it can get more energy essentially out of that or gather more energy out of it. Um, but yeah, it just charges this, the 280 watt battery bank that is then plugged into the AC inverter for it is plugged into this cord here, which goes over to this power brick. Um, these just run all my accessories. This is the TV tuner. There's an Amazon Prime stick. There's a plug for the switch. This is actually the Nintendo Switch's little pocket. You slide the switch in there and plug it in and it broadcasts up onto that TV up there. 
and then I have the Wi-Fi and the refrigerator. Those are the only things that really run on the electric and the, the battery charger for this. Um, again, different units have different features. Some of the features of this unit particularly that I liked was the bypass function where the inverter can actually produce 78 watts worth of electricity that never touches the battery. So it goes straight from solar to the inverter and then out as AC electric for all your peripherals. Um, that's an important function for me as I won't need to use the battery during the day and I can still charge and power everything otherwise. Um, but that's pretty much the electrical setup as of today. I might eventually change what unit I'm using as the total capacity of this battery isn't quite enough. I want to eventually build my own lithium iron phosphate setup, but that's a lot more complicated and will take some planning and engineering to get it done. But in the meantime, uh, the solar, if you're doing this yourself, so Nicholas S if, or Nick S if you prefer that, um, if you're doing this, make sure you gauge your wires properly. Make sure that you're using waterproof connectors, especially on the top side. Make sure those are all sealed. Um, any of the roof rack stuff, I would very strongly recommend anyone who mounts anything to the roof of your vehicle, make sure the bolts are all Loctited down, especially in a Jeep. You encounter a lot more bumps and turbulence throughout the entire vehicle because Jeeps are solid axle vehicles, which means that from side to side, there aren't U-joints nicely tucked in here, allowing the wheels independently to move and absorb those changes in road dynamic. So in order to avoid having vibrational movement of screws, I would always recommend using some sort of Loctite. And if you're building a solar system, understand wire gauges, because this is very important. Um, electricity is extremely dangerous if it's not calculated correctly. If you have too many amps coming in, you can, you can melt some stuff, cause some fires. And if you do cause some fires or put solar in your vehicle, get yourself a handy dandy little fire extinguisher. You should have one in there anyway. Most vehicles should just like a first aid kit, but get yourself a first aid kit, get yourself a fire extinguisher. If you're going to do solar, um, but yeah, that's the newest update for Nick S who asked for an update on the solar. Uh, once I put the anic tent tubes on it, I'm actually going to put a linear actuator that will mechanically or uh, electronically lift and lower the whole top piece and tilt it. So when I bring these poles off of the end of the Jeep, they'll telescope outward this way and then make a drape cloth that'll surround the back end of the Jeep. So my kitchen essentially will be I'm only got a sink now, soon to be table, soon to be stove. Um, and I got my light up in there on the flap. So uh, yeah, I would just plan it out for how you're going to use it. There is not a lot more you can do by total wattage than 200 watts. If you're looking to get solar, there are a couple of things that I would consider um, looking into. I prefer the highest efficiency for the space because gives you the most energy possible, which means these are monocrystalline. They come in polycrystalline, which means that the silicon is actually formed in different ways. So you'll notice it looks like um, like trash cans that get zinc coating. They have all those weird patchwork uh, geometric shapes in them. There's solar that looks like that. It's a lot less efficient. Um, but I would definitely just say get some high efficiency panels. This is HQST solar panels, 100 watts each. There are 12 to I think 15 or 18 volts um, output, and uh, and Renergy makes a very similar one. I think they're 100 dollars per panel, or roughly. I'll put some links in the description for the panels themselves. Unfortunately, Amazon probably has some aluminum, but it's way more expensive than what I've paid for this. I think the entire rack was about like 30 dollars or 40 bucks worth of like just spare aluminum. I went to a re aluminum recycling facility to find all of this. So uh, yeah, if anyone's looking to do solar on their Jeep, I would definitely recommend um, going to a solid ones. The flexible ones are very weak and silicone is actually really easy to chip and crack. So if it's flexible, you can bend it just enough to snap them. And then these little tiny lines inside it, if those break at all, then they're not conducting electricity. And the trick with that is when you're using solar, if this one cell were covered, if I just put a leaf on top of this, the maximum amount that this strip here could produce would be the least or 
what the lowest value is on that. Just like when you're putting batteries in series, if you have one dead battery and you put it in with four good batteries, you now have a really mediocre battery. Um, so those little tiny changes to the solar can ruin them. So I would always recommend a solid solar, always recommend mo uh, monocrystalline. So that just means it's one crystal that this was grown from in order to make the solar panels. It makes it much more efficient. So it's dollars more properly spent. Find yourself some aluminum recycling facility and you can build all the rest of it. Um, and the rest, I would just say, you know, obviously trial and error. Try to manufacture your own stuff. And if you can't, I ended up buying these pieces here, part of the Rugged Ridge um, roof rack set that they sold, but the outside pieces were just too ugly and big. So I kept these, but I ditched the other ones. If this is a little bit too complicated for you, you could still use the other brackets on it and make this much easier. You could buy a single piece of tube steel and, and this one piece of angle aluminum on the back and have it done and some, and some wires to connect it. Uh, but again, just make sure the safety measures are considered. Make sure you consider all your Loctite and uh, what your end application is. If 200 watts is enough for what you're going to be doing personally. But uh, yeah, that's the update.